Welcome, Welcome to, to our New Year's year service. A Happy New Year to you all. As we move from an old year into a new one, we change our calendars. Let us hear a call to worship and live for this year. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so we begin our service by singing a Christmas carol. Once in Royal David City, the words should be on the screen, but if you need to look in the hymn book, it's number 214 in Singing the Faith. Once in Royal David City.
let us pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that you care for your children, that you love us all, that you sent Jesus to show us the way. Thank you, Lord, that you know what we need and we praise you that you are the great God who loves us, who cares for us, who guides us and provides for us. We thank you for the senses that you gave us, that we can see, that we can hear, that we can taste and smell and touch. Lord, we just thank you that even when our senses aren't as good as we would like them to be, you are still there with us. Oh, and at this time of new year, thank you that you've brought us through the old year with all its ups and downs and its problems. And we pray, Lord, that you will show us the way in this new year. May we have a fresh start as individuals, as churches, as a country. May there be a real turning to you. Thank you that when Jesus came, he came as a baby and grew up among people just as we do. And we thank you that he is still there for us because he died and rose again and is in heaven with you. Oh Lord, we do ask that you will forgive us for all the things that we did and do that you don't really want us to do. Lord, forgive us. Oh Lord, may your Holy Spirit be with us in this service. Help us to truly worship you to know your presence with us wherever we are. We ask these things in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, Father who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah chapter 43 verses 14 to 21 and it's entitled Escape from Babylon. Israel's holy God, the Lord who saves you says, to save you I will send an army against Babylon. I will break down the city gates and the shouts of her people will turn into crying. I am the Lord, your holy God. I created you, Israel, and I am your king. Long ago, the Lord made a road through the sea, a path through the swirling waters. He led a mighty army to destruction, 
an army of chariots and horses. Down they fell, never to rise, snuffed out like the flame of a lamp. But the Lord says, do not cling to events of the past or dwell on what happened long ago. Watch for the new thing I am going to do. It is happening already. You can see it now. I will make a road through the wilderness and give you streams of water there. Even the wild animals will honour me. Jackals and ostriches will praise me when I make the rivers flow into the desert to give water to my chosen people. They are the people I made for myself and they will sing my praises. Thanks be to God for his word from the prophet Isaiah. Amen. We thought that instead of having part of the Christmas story read from the Bible, I would retell it using these finger puppets. This is Mary. She grew up in a place called Nazareth, quite away from Bethlehem. One day something extraordinary happened to her. An angel came to visit her and he told her that she would have a baby. Mary couldn't understand this because she wasn't married. But the angel told her that it would be a special baby, a baby boy because the Holy Spirit would come upon her. Mary said, All right. I will do what God wants. So the angel went away. But he appeared again in a dream. To Joseph. And he told Joseph, don't be frightened to take Mary to be your wife. The baby is special. He is from God. But you look after Mary. Don't be frightened to, to take her. So, so Joseph took Mary as his wife. But then they were told that they had to go to Bethlehem because everybody had to go to the place where they belonged where their tribe was and that was where Joseph came from. So even though Mary was near, near having the baby they had to go all the way to Bethlehem about 70 miles away and they didn't have a car or anything like we have it was either walk or if they could afford it, I had one by donkey. And when they got to Bethlehem, there was nowhere for them to stay. <coughs> so many other people had gone there as well. But one kindly person told them they could sleep in the stable. And it was during that night that the baby was born. The baby Jesus. Also that night, there were shepherds. 
not just one looking after his sheep but lots of them and the angel appeared to them and told them what had happened in Bethlehem and lots more angels came and sang glory to God and peace on earth so when the angel had left them the shepherd said let's go to Bethlehem let's go and see this baby and see if what the, the angels have told us is right so off they went to Bethlehem where they found Mary and Joseph and the baby there and they were so happy because they would seen what the angels had told them and they went back to their fields praising God and telling everybody what they'd seen a while later in a diff distant country there were some wise men we think there might have been three but we don't really know it only tells us about three gifts but these men studied the stars and when they saw this special star they looked in their books to see what it, it was all about and they discovered that it was foretold that a special star would appear and it would mean a new king in a place called Judea so they got their presents together and they went and travelled all the way to Bethlehem where they found Mary and Joseph and the baby though it calls him a child if you look in Matthew's Gospel they saw him and they gave him their gifts gold, frankincense and myrrh gifts that represented a king God and death all things that foretold of what would happen to this baby and we just thank you that he came for us and showed us God's love as he grew knowing more telling us so much about God the Father and showing his love for us and now we're going to sing a hymn that tells us what Jesus is coming meant we're going to sing number 312 in the hymn book but the words will come up the head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now let's sing together
reading from the epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. God, our Father, as for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses around us. So then, let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds onto us so tightly and let us run with determination the race that lies before us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross and he is now seated at the right side of God's throne. Think of what he went through. How he put up with so much hatred from sinners. So do not let yourselves become discouraged and give up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run the race with perseverance. That's how Hebrews chapter 12 starts. And fancy starting a sentence with, therefore, I was always taught years ago that if you see a therefore, ask what it's there for. And if we ask that question of these verses, we realise that Hebrews 12 follows on straight from Hebrews 11. And we know Hebrews 11, don't we? Those uh, great heroes of the faith listed for us. Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Gideon, Baruch, Samson, Moses, the people of Israel crossing the Red Sea and others. They conquered kingdoms, shut the mouths of lions, and they're watching you and me and how we're getting on with our Christian lives, our race of faith. That's why the uh, letter, the writer says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, because that's what we are. And as we begin this new year, 2023, it's all about a call to, uh, to run the race and to go for it for all that we're worth. And so that's what we're going to think about for a little while just now. Running the race, running the race with this great crowd of witnesses watching us there. Because the race that we're called to run, the life we're called to live, is a long distance race. It's one which isn't for the short haul, but for the long haul. And I still remember when I was at secondary school, the annual cross country race, and I absolutely hated it. It was my least favorite day of the year. I just did not enjoy and like and appreciate. I couldn't understand the idea of um, running all this huge distance over country paths and across fields and so on, and finally arriving back home. I was always, or rather at school, I was always last or next to last. With one exception, that was the year when a fellow pupil who loved cross country even less than I did he sabotaged the race the course that particular year and although I shouldn't have done I secretly quietly thought hooray to that but then when I was 14 in 1961 
I began a race, another long distance race that is still going on. I committed my life to our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and that was the beginning, that was if you like the, uh, the starter's gun being fired. And that's a race that, as I said, is still going on. This uh, chapter of Hebrews gives us three pointers for how we might run our race as we seek to follow Jesus this year. First of all, he says, throw off everything that hinders. Can you imagine uh, a contestant who comes up, to, lumbers up to the starting line all geared up in his winter woolies and insulation and scarf wrapped around him and his uh, that hiking boots on expecting to run the race no way and the letter says that it's so easy for us to think that we can run the race with all sorts of clutter uh, around our lives that make it difficult for us and for the first thing that he says is get rid of it throw it away throw off everything and the emphasis there on the everything everything that hinders and he mentions sin what an encumbrance that is he actually says it entangles us round our legs so that the racing is just impossible with sin as a problem in our lives. And we forget about all the respectable sins that it's so possible for us to, um, uh, to rather enjoy. Thank you very much. Not going to mention any of them by name. But we each know our own particular sins that need to be dealt with, to be repented of, turned away from. And so repent of your sin, put it to one side, have nothing to do with it as we begin the race of a new year. And the other clutter are things such as cultural secularism that seeps right into our minds of every one of us, Christian or not. But over-reliance on ritual and the things that we must have to do. And uh, even casualness, a casual attitude. Anything goes, thank you very much. That becomes a clutter for us, eh? something which holds us back, a hindrance. First of all, throw off everything that hinders. And then the second pointer, run the race with perseverance or patience or endurance, the race that is set before us. You might say it's a matter of keep on, keeping on, of stickability, of being in it to win it and not letting go not going for the short haul for a quick sprint and then uh, sit back and rest, but no, keep on going at it. Uh, the writer of the letter already said in chapter 10, you have need of endurance to his people. If they had need of it, I guess, and I don't know what it was, but there was something which was preventing them from keeping going and they needed reminding about it. So again in chapter 12 he says, keep going, endurance, run the race with that kind of endurance and perseverance. And we may often need to be reminded of that, even during the year that's ahead, lest we slacken off and slip up on that. The saying goes, when the going gets tough, the tough get going and they keep going as well. Paul 
wrote in his letter to the Philippians about his own experience and his own uh, kind of discipleship. He says, I press on. I press on towards the mark, towards the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It was his testimony. And I wonder, is that our testament too that we're saying on January the 1st, I'm pressing on towards the goal all the way through. And the third point of which this passage has for us is fix your eyes on Jesus. He says, let's run with endurance the race that he set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. Look to him. He's the one. Eyes on the finishing tape. Keep your eyes on Jesus because he's the one there to be looking to. The whole point of living a Christian life is that it is living for Jesus. And the whole goal at the end is to reach that point where we are so close to him. He's there waiting for us at the end of the journey, at the end of the race, at the finishing tape. Keep your eyes fixed on him even now, 365 days of the year. And I wonder, are we fixing our eyes on this Jesus? Because if we don't, we grow weak and we, we slip up. Remember that the saying goes, Seven days without prayer make one week. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Set your time, set your time each day to pray, to spend time with him, to meditate and contemplate, to consider him and all that he means to you, moment by moment, to be kept in him. So, in conclusion, as we step out into a year that is ahead, onto another leg of our journey of our race, this is the first day of running the, the rest of the race. And Jesus would say to us, on your marks, get set and go. And keep on going. May the Lord help us to do just that. We turn to sing now. Three short songs that follow one after another. All about this same theme of following and keeping our eyes on Jesus. There. The, my Lord knows the way through the wilderness. When the road is rough and steep. And follow, follow. I will follow Jesus.
loving and gracious God, as we stand at the beginning of this new year, we thank you for your presence with us in the past and we confess our need of your continued presence with us and your guidance as we face the future. We each have our hopes and expectations for this new year that is ahead of us. You alone know what it holds, and only you can give us the strength and the wisdom we will need to meet its challenges. So help us to humbly put our hands into your hand and to trust you and to seek your will for our lives during this coming year. In the midst of life's uncertainties, in the days ahead, Assure us of the certainty of your unchanging love. In the midst of life's inevitable disappointments and heartaches, help us to turn to you for the stability and the comfort that we all need. In the midst of life's temptations and the pull of our stubborn self-will, help us not to lose our way but have the courage to do what is right in your sight, regardless of the cost. And in the midst of our daily preoccupation and the pursuits that lay ahead, open our eyes to the sorrows and injustice of our hurting world and help us to respond with compassion and sacrifice to those who are friendless and in need. May our constant prayer be that of the ancient psalmist who said, Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees, then I will keep them to the end. Father God, we pray for our nation and its leaders during these difficult times and for all who are seeking to bring peace and justice to our dangerous and troubled world. We pray especially for your protection on all of those who serve in our armed forces and we thank you for their commitment to defend our freedom, even at the cost of their own lives. Be with their families also and assure them of in, and of your love and concern for them. Gracious God, bring our divided nations together and give us a greater vision of what you would have us to be. And loving and holy God, as we look back over the past year, we thank you for your goodness to us far beyond what we have deserved. May we never presume on your past goodness or forget all your mercies to us, 
but may they instead lead us to repentance and to a new commitment to make what you, the foundation and centre of our lives, are to be this year. Loving God, we pray for all who are lonely, sick or bereaved at this time. May they know your comfort and your peace. Lord, we name them quietly in our hearts and bring them to your throne of grace now. And so, our Father, we thank you for the promise and hope of this new year. Help us to look forward to it with expectancy and faith. Spirit of the risen Christ, be with us today and always. Be our light, our guide and our comforter. Be our strength and our courage. May this new year be a time of deep spiritual growth for us, a time for forgiving freely and unconditionally a time for growing in virtue and goodness. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us, dwell in us, walk with us in the days ahead, today and always. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue our worship as we sing hymn number 470 in Singing the Faith. Lord, for the years, your love has kept and guided. Number 470 in Singing the Faith.
thank you for watching this video for, and for us being invited to take it. We pray that you will follow Jesus in this coming year. And let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves to you, body, soul and spirit, for all that lies ahead, and pray that we may know your guidance and be faithful to you, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, and, and the, the love, love of God, God and, and the, the fellowship of the, of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Amen.